CBS 2 News. Lucky man. Thank you, Juan. Tonight, CBS 2 investigates accusations that the money pouring into Indian gaming casinos is bringing trouble to Southland reservations. The question, are local tribes banishing members to pad individual profits? CBS 2's Christy Fajardo reports on the casino tribe outcasts. Well, my family built this in 57. <laughs> For more than a century. We have the original deed signed by President McKinley. Generations of distant cousins, Rick Cuevas. We've had somebody here since 1895. And Michael Madariaga's families <laughs> have walked the same dirt roads on the Pachanga Reservation in Temecula. Miles away at the Paula Reservation in North San Diego County. This is where I went to school. Gina Howard and her family have similar roots. And my mother, Teresa Denver, were both born in those that house and although the two families have never met they share a common story members of both clans find themselves without a tribe your whole community turns away from you and they look at you like you're a pariah nobody has more of a right or is more pachanga than us it's called disenrollment in both cases their tribal councils have questioned their bloodlines but the families believe this isn't about ancestry it's about settling old scores and about money. It's about greed. I think it's about control. It's about money and political power. Ever since the tribes got casinos, members have been entitled to a share of the windfall. Indian gaming is estimated to be a multi-billion dollar industry in California. In July, when Howard and seven of her relatives were disenrolled, she says her cut of the Paula profits equaled approximately $9,000 a month. At Pachanga, W-2 form show in 2005, members received $269,000, or more than $22,000 a month. After Cuevas and his clan were kicked out in 2006, he says that number jumped to 30,000. Each person has been disenrolled now, 250 of us, has lost $1.6 million. Our rights to vote, our rights to health care. Uh, educational assistance. They threw a couple of our little cousins out of the tribal school, physically removed them from the school and told them they could no longer be here again. In documents obtained by CBS2, an anthropologist hired by Pechanga itself to study ancestry says there's significant evidence Cuevas and his clan are Pechanga, and he's surprised and dismayed the tribe continues to maintain otherwise. Pachanga refused a repeated request for an on-camera interview, but in a statement, the tribe's chairman, Mark Macaro, says it's a question of ancestry and adds, though deeply painful for our tribe and the people affected, this correction was necessary to protect the integrity of the tribal government, our culture, and our history. As for Paula... It has nothing to do with money. Its chairman, Robert Smith, did sit down with us. He says the issue boils down to lineage, not money. They can say what they want, but that's not true. Right is right and wrong is wrong, and they don't meet requirements to be enrolled here. Smith insists he has documents, records he wouldn't show us, proving this woman, Howard's great-great-grandmother, was only half Native American. That would mean Howard and her cousins don't meet the blood requirement to enroll as members of the Paula tribe. Why not show those documents? Again, we're, we're a sovereign Indian tribe. We shouldn't have to show it. But the Bureau of Indian Affairs disagrees. In this letter obtained by CBS2, the BIA recommends Howard and seven relatives be put back on the membership rolls and says they meet the required degree of Indian blood. We got a document from them that says that she's half, so they talk out of both sides of their mouth, the BIA. At the end of the day, under the tribe's constitution, it's a tribal council that determines membership. A few months ago, Paula disenrolled another 150 or so of Howard's extended family. They accounted for about 15 percent of the tribe's membership. It's pretty clear that there are tribal members who should be in the tribe who are being disenrolled. Matthew Fletcher is an indigenous law professor at Michigan State University. He's been studying mass disenrollments and says he's noticed a pattern. Well, we're mostly seeing mass disenrollments in California and some of the other tribes around the country that have uh, very successful gaming enterprises. For now, the disenrolled have no legal recourse. Because Indian reservations are sovereign, state and federal judges have ruled the courts have no jurisdiction, and the BIA has said it has no authority over membership decisions. It's going to take an act of Congress. John Gomez, Jr., president of the American Indian Rights and Resources Organization, is himself a disenrollee. He says Congress must amend the Indian Civil Rights Act to allow courts to hear the cases. There's no available recourse, and 
those tribal officials understand that. Their attorneys understand that. So they, they can manipulate the process. Everyone agrees that won't be easy. Casinos pour money into campaign coffers and other tribes may not want the federal government meddling in tribal affairs. In the meantime, Cuevas, Madariaga, Howard and others are left with memories, old photos. Now we can't be buried here next to our relatives. And nowhere to turn. They just threw us away like yesterday's trash. They have the Rolexes, but we have the time. Christy Fajardo, CBS2 News. Although disenrollments are taking place up and down the state, we want to be clear, locally it is specific to Pachanga and Paula. Other Indian gaming casinos in Southern California, such as Morongo and San Manuel, are not embroiled in similar